welcome to another instalment of the Bonefish series for Sport Quest. I'm Jo Stevenson and today we're going to be tying the squimp fly, another really important fly to have in your uh, fly box. Uh, pretty simple, um, isn't too taxing if you're still new to, to fly tying. Um, and uh, you don't need many materials for it so we're just going to use a little bit of um, craft fur on this one. If you want something natural then go ahead and get yourself some fox or something like that. So I'm going to use some tan craft fur. We're going to need a, um, a dumbbell eye or a, uh, a, bean, a bean chain, a chain bead eye, which is what I'm going to be using today. Um, some silly legs. I'm going to be using clear, but you can use tan or pure orange if you like. Um, a little bit of flash, so a bit of crystal flash. We're going to use tan UV and a body material. Now, if you want to try out some dubbing loops and go ahead, um, they do allow a bigger build up on the body, um, a little bit more of a buggy appearance. Um, but I'm going to cheat today and use some uh, dirty bug yarn uh, by Semperfly. It's really um, quick and easy and you can just wrap it on um, without having to fiddle about doing dubbing loops. So um, let's get to it, shall we? So um, the most important part of the fly obviously is the hook. Uh, I'm going to use a, uh, a Sprite saltwater hook in size 6 today. Um, so I'll just pop that in my vise. Okay, perfect. So wrapping onto the thread, uh, wrapping onto the hook with your thread, I'm going to use an orange because I do like a little bit of orange in my bonefish flies. Uh, so this will just give it a little bit more of a colourful nose tip. Okay, so the different thing about the squimp fly compared to some other bonefish um, flies of a similar nature is the eyes are actually further back on the shank. Um, a lot of bonefish flies such as the, you know, the Crazy Charlie and the Gotchas, they all have their, their eyes at the front, uh, whereas this one is going to be at the back. So it's almost in line with the hook point. So you want to come just in front of that. And then we're going to do what we've done in the past, if you've watched any of the other videos. So make one bobble there, move forward one wrap and make another bobble. That makes a little seating area for your, your eyes to sit in. Um, my eyes. So pick out a nice set of eyes. Pop them in that little seat and then wrap over. Make sure they're sitting nice and central in it. And then we're going to do an X wrap. So over the top, under the bottom, and over the other way. So a figure of eight or an X wrap, um, you'll hear it called. Um, so you're going to do 10 to 20 wraps around, pulling tight in between, and making sure it's nice and level. And you can go all one way and then follow up the other. It doesn't matter so long as it's nice and secure. Okay, after we've done that, we're then going to go around it. So around the eyes, under and over the top of the shank. So we're not going under the shank at all. We're just going around and we're pulling all of the wrap, X wraps we've just done nice and tight. So it's kind of holding those eyes in place. Okay, lovely. And then we're going to wrap, bringing the thread just beyond the bend of the hook. So we're going to take it round to about there. Now I'm going to just pop a little bit of varnish just over my eyes and down the shank. Lovely. Okay, so time to put the tail in. So like I said, I'm using a bit of craft fur today. So I'm not always a big fan of craft fur. I find it just doesn't look quite as natural as natural. But that's what we're using today. So cut off a chunk and pull out all the, the fluff. Pull out any of the ultra long bits that you don't want in there. So you don't want the tail too long. But you do want it to have a nice taper to it. Okay. So we're want the, wanting the tail to be about a length and a half the size of the shank. Okay, so it's going to stick out there. I'm going to cut off the excess now. You can do it afterwards if you want, but I find it easier to make it neater if we do it beforehand. Okay, so holding it to the shank, my little tip is to nip your thread between your thumb and your forefinger, bring it round and then just lower it down onto your hook shank and there, it just holds it in place for you without any slippage. 
So tying around and tying that in nice and tight. We are then going to put in some flash and some legs. So just one strand of um, crystal flash will do, a little strand of UV, popping that flash on the bottom of your, of your thread and you're just going to roll that on top. So it's already sitting on top nice and stable. That allows you to hold each piece with your, your fingers, put them in where you want them, either side of the tail, and then just tie them down. Cut them to length. Okay, nice. Now we're gonna pop the, uh, some crazy legs on, so get yourself some rubber legs. And um, I am going to use some clear. Now, find out what's half, pinch there and do exactly the same as you did with your flash. So wrapping underneath your thread and on top of your shank and then lining your, your legs up so they're either side of the shank and then tying it down. So they sit nicely kind of either side of your tail. Okay, so just tidy up there. Then I'm going to take the thread in front of the eyes and up to, sorry, in front of the eyes and that's where we're leaving it there. So we're going to put the body in. Like I said, I use this dirty bug yarn. And what I'm going to do is lay it over the eyes and catch it in in front of the eyes. And then just tidy it up towards the eye of the hook. That just gives a little bit more of a, a bulky base there. And then again behind the eyes and then wrap all the way down to your tail. Tidy up a little bit and then take your thread all the way back to the eye of the hook. So we want the the back of the fly to be a bit more bulky than the front of the fly. So when you start wrapping, you can do, you know, two or three extra throws towards the back, nice and neatly. And then when you come towards the, uh, the front of the fly, just taper it down a bit. Okay, when you get to the eye, the, the dumbbell eyes, we're gonna go X wraps over underneath. And again, a couple of wraps here and then go back and do it again just to build up a little bit more bulk. And then taper it down when you get to the nose and then tie off. So cut off the excess. more wraps around just to make sure it's nice and tied down. Now if you want to, you can use some Velcro, bucky this up a bit so it's a bit more bulkier. There's a bit more life about it, but there we go. Okay, so we're gonna spin the fly upside down and we're gonna add the wing. So cut off another chunk of craft fur and tidy it up. So pulling off all the fluff out the end Checking the front for any overgrown pieces you don't want. Thinning it down a little bit because you don't want it too thick. Sparse is quite good when coming to bonefish flies. Okay. So we want this to be roughly uh, just above the, the hook point, not quite as long as the tail. So about there we'll do. <coughs> So holding that down. To the eye of the hook. Nip between your forefingers like we did before. And slide it down. And then secure in place with some extra wraps. Good. Okay. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, now you might, might want to pop a little bit of varnish just to soak through and hold those fibres in place. OK, 
Okay, so now we need to pop on our, our final pair of legs. Um, again, I'm going to use clear. But we only need short bits this time. <clears throat> so you can pre-cut them or you can cut them afterwards. But we're going to do the same as what we did with the flash. So spinning it all the way around to the other side of the hook this time in line with the um, B chain eye. Leave that there. And get your second one in. And leave that one there. Okay. Then we're going to tie them tightly. And then just pull them forward, pull them back, sorry, and just one in front. Perfect. So spin that round. Make sure they're all nice and neat. And then hold them back, and then we're going to whip finish, which is a bit tricky. Move these legs out the front. There we are. So. finish cut up your excess just make sure your legs are roughly the same lengths and then finish with a little bit of varnish just to make sure you might want to um, once the varnish is dry pop a little bit of UV just to bonefish proof the fly there we go so that's the squint fly nice little fly Good to have in your bonefish box. Um, so good luck time. See ya.